Hello and welcome everyone inside the Update studio for our live recap of the top men's stories from 18.4. I'm Tommy Marquez alongside Pat Sherwood. And uh, we had some breaking news this morning as director of the games Dave Castro announced on Facebook Live that you guys, the community, would have a say in 18.5. 18.5 is going to be decided by you, the CrossFit community. Yeah. Tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pacific, we are going to announce three workouts. And you guys are going to choose the workout that we all do. You will have two hours to vote for which of the three you want us to suffer through. Oh my god. <laughs> Pick something you think I'll be amazing at. <laughs> wow, I think I think a lot of us uh, shared Annie Thor's daughter's sentiments, but Pat, it feels like Dave's given us the uh, keys to the Ferrari here. Yeah, I know. Letting the community pick the <laughs> final workout of the Open is both a, both a wonderful idea and maybe something a little bit scary. That the last time we let the fans vote at the games, they could have chosen was it double DT or heavy DT. They picked the opposite of what I would have liked to have seen, so hopefully they're more in line with my desires this time. Yeah, well, the fans will get to vote via a poll, and we've actually got a poll for you guys right now, similar to what we had yesterday. Who do you think is going to have a better year in 2018? Three games rookies from last year, Street Horner, Tim Paulson, or Michael Palomba. You can vote in the Facebook Live comment section below using the hashtag Horner, hashtag Paulson, or hashtag Palomba, so please cast your vote. And if you get familiar with this format here right now, it's the same format we're going to use tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pacific to determine what 18.5 is going to be. So definitely cast your vote and get used to it because I hope you guys all vote tomorrow as well. Um, moving on to 18.4, Pat, just some general thoughts here. I think it's safe to say that 18.4 is a workout that maybe caused a little bit of hubbub. It did. It was, it was classic CrossFit, hey, we shall give you a chance to lift heavy weights, but you're going to have to earn it. So the big deadlift came out, and there was a new handstand push-up standard, which was super easy for most people and very lenient. <laughs> no, I mean, it was, it was simpler to measure, but a lot of athletes had to stretch out and push probably more so than ever before, so there were some tight heel-to-line ratios there. Definitely encouraged some virtuosity, but some athletes who clearly didn't struggle and performed quite well in this workout. Your top 10 overall for 18.4 for the men. And old long arms Maliolo Man. walks away with yet another worldwide open workout victory. It's his third in his career. All of them with a little bit of deadlift. Some new names right behind him, but uh, Rob Forte, Matt Fraser, some guys we're used to seeing at the games, along with Bino and Vellner, some guys out of Canada East. But Pat, Austin Maliolo, from the get-go on this announcement, you kind of assumed he was going to do well. Man, six minutes and two seconds. Austin has never met a deadlift that he does not like. And believe it or not, this is his third open workout worldwide win for him. He does incredible. And one of the other two wins that he had also involved heavy deadlifts. And just to continue this story, he has two worldwide event records for regionals. Both of them were repeats, and they were 21.59 of a 315-pound deadlift. So. I mean, talk about a wheelhouse. Yeah, and someone who apparently it was his wheelhouse, but we may not have known, probably because we've never heard of him before, was Bartek Lipka. Yes, I had to do a little bit of digging about this gentleman, <laughs> but this guy crushed it, knocked it out of the park on 18.4. He did it in 6 minutes and 34 seconds. That is good for second place worldwide. He's out of the Europe North region, which I feel like we've been talking about a lot, so I can't wait to see the regionals over there uh, go down. He's from CrossFit R99. He is the fourth, excuse me, he's been the fittest man in Poland the last four years. So he is 100% legit. He's been to regionals before, so I want to see him there again. Nice to see him at the top of the leaderboard for that workout. Another athlete who maybe wasn't on the top of the leaderboard, but you're used to seeing his name, Scott Panchik. An impressive performance primarily because of when he did this workout compared to everyone else. Man, such a veteran. I'm a big Scott Panchik fan. You, are, you guys all know that with good reason. So he's been to the games five times, never finished worth, worse than sixth place. And doing a head-to-head -head open announcement live is both a blessing and a curse. It's great. You get to feed off the energy of the crowd, but you just learn the workout with the rest of us, and very quickly, you're trying to go to the games. You have to put up a, a great score with very little planning. And man, he did it fast. Knew that breaking up Diane made a lot of sense. His line on the handstand push-ups was tight. He got some no reps. He didn't panic, was cool, calm, and collected. And while he lost Diane, 
to Bjorn Carl Goodmanson. He won 18.4 in that head-to-head -head scenario and put up such a great time that he didn't have to redo it. Yeah, executed it like a pro. And I know a lot of us, myself included, used his strategy going forward after seeing yep. that. Giving you guys a quick update on the poll that we just introduced. Here are your results so far. And by a long shot, it's Tim Paulson with 67% of okay. the vote. Palomba and Horner trailing significantly behind. Remember, guys, cast your vote in the comment section below using those hashtags. Spelling is important. <laughs> Double check your dictionary, your thesaurus, whatever you need to do. Read this, read our graphics, and make sure you're spelling their name right. right. That counts and matters in terms of logging your votes. Not a lot of votes. faith in Horner. Yeah, and, and trust me, you're going to want to get that down early because this is the same system that we're using tomorrow as well. So be sure to make your spelling correct. Comment in the Facebook Live section below. We'll check in in just a moment on those results as well. Moving on to the overall leaderboard in 18, after 18.4 and four weeks of the Open. No surprise there. Who's at the top? None other than Matt Fraser. Nearly a 300-point lead over second place. That is seems, offensive. <laughs> it really is. It seems like that gap just gets wider with every week. Um, a couple of new guys but have been towards the top over the course of these four week, weeks. John Simone, Roy Lemaire as well as Alexandra Caron. An athlete who's on this list, Pat, that I know you've been impressed with thus far in seventh place overall is Logan Collins. Yes, and I was more impressed with him in the last five hours when I started doing some research for the show. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll dig up some stuff on Logan Collins. I know he's been to the games a couple times, and as I just unearthed more facts, man, I was really incredibly impressed. So he's seventh worldwide after four weeks. He's been to the games twice. Rookie debut in 2016, he took 31st. No worries, okay? You're shaking out the dust. He came back last year, jumped all the way to 11th. That's huge with one year of progress. And he's been doing the Open since 2015, and every year he's made big leaps and bounds. 139th the first year, to 45th, to 29th, to now sitting in 7th. So, man, he's trending in the right direction. Yeah, hard to ignore the performances that he's been putting down as of late. And two guys behind him on the leaderboard that are a part of our poll that I know are impressive, and we'll get to see them throw down from the same region as Michael Palomba and Tim Paulson. Oh, yeah, the northeast region, man. It's going to be a battle when the east takes place. So we've got Mike Palomba currently sitting in eighth worldwide, 22 years old, out of CrossFit Exceed. Last year, 2017, he was a rookie at the Games, took 31st place. His best finish was 15th. So he's got a lot of room to improve, and based upon how he's doing in the Open, he's putting in the work. Tim Paulson, right behind him, ninth worldwide in the Open right now. Again, from the Northeast region, 28 years old. He was a rookie last year. He took 19th. I think if you're in the top 20 at the Games as a rookie, you crushed it. And his finishes were excellent. He had three top 10s at the Games as a rookie. So very, very bright future. Going to give you guys another update on the poll. Just checking in to see if maybe some of the other athletes have closed the gap. Doesn't look like it. Tim Paulson has actually ex ex expanded Man. upon his percentage. He's got 69% of the vote thus far. Michael Palomba, 24%. Man, just Horner's relatives out there <laughs> voting for him. No, <laughs> nobody has any faith in Street Horner, 7%. Definitely keep your eye on him. He is a stud. I have no doubt he's going to do well. A few athletes who maybe haven't done so well and find themselves on the bubble this week, going to have to make up some ground in the final week of the Open. Anthony Davis made a significant slide down the Central East leaderboard. James Newberry, we talked about him at length, but made some improvements. He's inside the qualifying line, but he's not out of the woods yet. Needs another strong performance. Dakota Reger still on the outside and moved up just a little bit, but things are looking tough for him along with Elijah Muhammad, who went in the wrong direction in week number four. But Pat, guy at the top of this list, did not do himself any favors this week in 18-4 was Anthony Davis. Yes, out of the Central East region. And he was on our radar because he was doing well the first few weeks. Last year, 2017, he finished the Open overall in fifth place. He did amazing. Entering week four, as far as the Central East was concerned, he was in fourth in his region. Now, because of what happened in 18.4, he's in 28th place entering the final week of competition. So, I mean, if you're a fan, all hope is not lost, but it's uh, he needs he needs to do incredible, and he needs all of his peers to do very poorly. Yeah, and he can also get multiple rounds of invites, but you never want to leave, leave it up right. to that. Still got some work to do to make it to regionals. One athlete, unfortunately, who will not be making regionals has been a cause for a lot of talk so far as Jacob Hepner. Struggled a little bit on 18.4 with the new standard, and it looks like his season's done. Yeah, I didn't, 
I didn't see this coming at all. Hepner was one of the people that, without question, there are people in my mind I can just count on seeing at regionals, and Hepner falls into one of those categories, but he submitted two videos for 18.4. The first one, he finished the workout within the time cap. He reviewed the footage, and he said he felt that his handstand push-ups didn't actually meet the standard upon review. So good for him, had integrity, said, integrity said I'm not gonna submit that, redid it, being much more strict or keeping to the standard and did not complete all of the repetitions. And his score was so poor that there's just no way in the world that he's gonna make it to regional. So didn't see that coming. I know he's heartbroken, upset, and all the emotions that go along with mm -hmm. it, but, but so am I as a fan. Uh, absolutely, you definitely wanna see him succeed, but even just looking at that video that he posted, it just doesn't add up, and it didn't do himself any favors with the angle or anything like that as well. I get paid to have a strong opinion. I mm -hmm. enjoy having a strong opinion, but that video was shot so far away, it looked like a white line on a white wall, then not being there, like I, I just, I'm actually at a loss as, as to what happened. So the more details will come to the surface. Certainly not the way you want your season to end. Definitely feel for Jacob there. Some other athletes who are doing pretty well in the Open thus far, the tops of their division. Here are your best in class for the athletes in both of the teenage divisions for the, men, for the boys and all of the Masters men's division. Dallin Pepper has been holding strong through four weeks. Keep, feel like we announce his name every single week, so good performance from them. Familiar name, old Billy Grundler in the 45 to 49, sitting at the top of the leaderboard. Stuart Swanson leading the Masters 55 to 59, and none other than the best hair in the game, David Hippenstiel. Without question. Has got the 60 plus division on lock, but one athlete caught your eye with how well he's done in the youngest division, and that's Tudor Magda. Tudor Magda at 15 years young, Rewind the clock to 2017 at the Reebok CrossFit Games in the 14 to 15 year old division. He took ninth place, phenomenal. He's out of the West Coast region and currently in the worldwide open for his division, he is first place. And he has two first place workouts, excuse me, he has two first and a second out of five scored events. Now he's a year older, clearly a year fitter and looking to probably get even closer to the podium this year, assuming that he makes it out there. Yeah, it should be exciting if he makes it to see how well he does in Madison this year. Well, we gave you guys a poll earlier in the show, and here are the results of who you think is going to have the best season in 2018. And Horner, even though Horner picked he, he up- He made some ground he up. He picked up a couple of a few percentage points, but still, Tim Paulson by a landslide. People seem to think that the old uh, ginger beard is gonna do the best with 67% of the vote, can't blame him, he's a beast. He looks right. even better this year with how well he's done in the open, but certainly gonna be exciting to see all of those guys throw down this year as well. Thank you guys for voting. And remember, the same format is what we're gonna use tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pacific to determine the final open workout of 2015. So be sure to tune in on Facebook Live and cast your vote in the comment section below that. Thank you guys for voting. We also have the 18.5 announcement. Once we determine what that workout is, you'll get to see these three women throw down at 5 p.m. Pacific in that workout. Katrin David's daughter, Annie Thor's daughter, Sarah Sigmund's daughter, three of Iceland's finest, all three inside the top five at the games last year. They'll be throwing down at CrossFit Reykjavik, again at 5 p.m. Pacific. Looking at these three women, not knowing what the workouts are, I'm gonna make you earn your money, Pat. Who's your pin to win 18.5? Man, so much fitness between the three daughters there. Ugh. I think regardless of what 18.5 is going to be, I think that David's daughter walks away with that. However, if we're looking all the way to 2018, I'll give you another pick. Out of all those three women, Thor's daughter finishes the best at the games. Whoa. That's, that's an already, already, already looking that. forward yep. to Madison. So there's two for one for you. Oh, man. I think those other two women will have something to say about that. <laughs> but that's going to do it for us today. Thanks, you guys, for voting. Remember, we have the, the 3 p.m. poll tomorrow to determine the final open workout as well. After the 18.5 announcement, too, Fittest on Earth 3, the redeemed and the dominant, drops at midnight, so be sure to check that out on all the streaming platforms that it is available to you guys. For Pat Sherwood, I'm Tommy Marquez. Go out and vote. Choose wisely. And we'll see you guys next week. Heartfelt congratulations to, oh boy, uh, Mitch Bernard, Joe Scali, and uh, Ty, uh, let's do it, uh, Travis Williams and Jason Carroll. <laughs> Uh, it's about a tablespoon. Uh, here's my open humiliation for having the weakest deadlift of the bunch. Bottoms up. <coughs> oh. <laughs>
Next, next week, as a cake to her face, and you jumped in water. <laughs>